Hey, drink talk. Talk. Yeah, we're live now. We're live All right. Now. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Drink Talk Nation. This is Brian with uh, Drink Talk. It's happens with uh, Brett's not here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have our technical advisor tonight, yeah, so right. uh, we're uh, flying from the hip tonight, and we are on vacation. And we decided to do a couple tours tonight in uh, Maine. We are up in uh, Portland, Maine, and uh, why not on vacation do a little live video stream from uh, some of the breweries and distilleries? Unfortunately. Uh, we did not have a lot of cell service tonight, so we decided to do this kind of as an after-the-fact uh, tour. And we went to a brewery, and we also went to a distillery. Uh, hey, Mark. Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> How's it going? Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm not Brett, by the way. Yeah, this is not Brett. <laughs> um, I'm joined by my uh, brother-in-law, Ken. And uh, Ken... Uh, comes to us from uh, New York or New Jersey. I well, mean, what, tonight from Portland, but we're tonight you know, from Portland. I'm yeah. I'm I'm uh, so I'm in New York, and uh, we're thrown together by the forces of marriage, and well, not our marriage, but uh, <laughs> as it turns out, marrying the same uh, people in a nice family. So we're up in Portland together. It's great. Exactly. And Ken does have a background. Um, he is quite knowledgeable on alcohol. He is a uh, certified sommelier, Ooh. and uh, so we went to a brewery and distillery and decided to test taste. Uh, some of the things that they had. The um, the first one that we went to was Allagash Brewing Company, which when on vacation. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. The boys. <laughs> yeah. So, do, do you want to say where in Jersey? Oh, uh, this is great. Yeah. Well, it's it's ironically West New York, New Jersey, which is like right across the park from New York. I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. It's close. That's the big deal. But you know, hey. Yeah. So, yeah, we went to Allagash Brewery. Allagash uh, Brewing Company. Yep. Really cool spot, actually. This started in 1995. Yep. Uh, Rob Todd, I believe, is the guy who started this. Uh, he wanted to do something different with uh, German-American style beers, and uh, he felt like there was something not happening in the United States with this, and he put out his first offering, which was the Allagash White. Uh, we did try that today. Really cool beer with a little bit of uh, orange peel and coriander. We'll get into that later. But uh, that is that was one of his big things that he wanted to do. And he was uh, he was a big deal. And it, it took off. It's been a really interesting process. We went out and tasted a lot of beers. And I mean... I, I, uh, a lot I, mean, of, I mean, we well, had, I mean, you know, we had about tasted. Ten, ten of tasted yeah, yeah, I think we tasted. We had about beers. ten of theirs. We even got into a couple of their reserve lists, which was awesome. We, we got a couple of those we'll talk about too, but... Uh, yeah. Here, let's let's, let's uh, get started. Well, the reason we went there was uh, I we came up oh, here to that's right. yeah, yeah we, that's we right. came up yeah. here to Portland, Maine, and I had no idea. I've never had Maine beers before, so I reached out to one of the local uh, or one of the uh, the the uh, uh, trip advisors. Uh, if yep. you're going on vacation and you're looking up I mean, you what to do, do in a local you're area, yeah, right? you, you search TripAdvisor. So the number one thing to do here in Portland, Oregon, was to go to Allagash Brewing Company. Yep. Buy a lot. That way it was like the number one and thing. There are to a lot do. of great brewers yeah. here, and clearly by being in Portland, you can. I mean, you can tell people are dedicated to uh, distilling and brewing here. There's a, a ton of great food. Portland mm -hmm. is a great place to visit. If you're not uh, planning a trip here, you are a fool because there's some great stuff going on here. But Allagash is ahead of the game and is really well established in the area. And definitely one of the places you should make a yeah. trip to, as clear by every review there is out there. It is. Go to Allagash. And it's we only it's started, awesome. we, I mean, that's not going to be the only re review that we probably do at this point, but uh, that's the first one we started with just because it was the number one. <laughs> um, and I see some comments that uh, Dogfish, Dogfish Head is not out, actually out of Portland, Maine. Yeah. Uh, they, I, actually, I, I want to say they're out of uh, New Hampshire, but I am. Um, I think that might be true. Um, yeah. I don't remember right offhand, but they are. Yeah, I mean, if I could fish, if, visit Dogfish right now, uh, that would be awesome. But uh, we wanted to stick around Maine. We also have family and wives that will disown us if we go too far out of hand. So we <laughs> we wanted to stick around Portland to start with. Exactly. Smart. Yeah, exactly. Smart men live long. Yeah, so we yeah, say, yeah happy wife, happy life <laughs> is what we're going to go with on that one. So um, the uh, the number one, or so we did a flight first. And actually here um, at Allagash Brewing Company, they, the, the flights are actually pre-made. You can't actually... Uh, do anything off the the menu, um, which I think is smart. Yeah, That's I fine. mean they, they've got taste a, they, what they do best. Exactly, or, yeah, it, it highlights great. what they do. Yep. And the first one that we took was the uh, Hoppy Table Drink, which is their IPA version. And um, for me, it was it was a very hop forward, very uh, dry hop 
uh, very hop forward in the mouth. Um, kind of like you're sucking on hops, which I enjoy as a home brewer. Um, and, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to put uh, Ken on the spot here on, on, and see what he has to say about the, the, that one. <laughs> I think the, uh, this one was great because it's one of, those, one of those beers you can drink just about any time. Uh, I mean, you know, breakfast is always out of the question for me, but I feel like any time after that, uh, I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, I feel like I have to dedicate a couple hours to not beer. Um, that, that's okay. Coffee comes in handy here. Yeah, uh, but no, I feel like this is a great day beer. Uh, it's a fun beer to take with you, and it's easy to drink. And while there is a lot of hot presence, as far as Allagash's uh, list, this is a, a pretty easy goer, which is kind of nice. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I will agree with that. It's uh, it's a I, I would consider it less as a less of an IPA and more of a pale ale. And I mean, their focus is definitely Belgian. I mean, right, like absolutely. they're in Belgian influence, so IPAs Very heavy. we use yeah. that lightly. But they they yeah. clearly are trying to do. Uh, well, not quite Blue Moon and OJ, but I mean, it's there. Uh, <laughs> at least half, at least half the menu was a Belgian style. It was beer. really. Yeah. I mean, well, they they say they're all 100% Belgian influence throughout. I mean, yeah. they would say that that's it, and and they do a lot of like tarts and stuff like that. But like that's it. Yeah, I mean, they mm -hmm. they're they want to spread out and do as much uh, flavor wise as they can, which for is sure. cool for sure. Uh, the second one that we had on the tasting was the Two Lights, which is mm. their everyday lager, and that was a very uh, simple introduction to a lager, and lagers are a more crisp, uh, sweet forward, uh, top fermenting yeast. Uh, those of you that are fans of lagers, ales tend to be a bottom fermenting, a little darker, uh, less sweet yeast. But uh, the uh, the lagers, this was a, a good introductory. Anybody that's doing beer probably does a lager just because they want something that's an introductory beer. Um, they want something that's easy drinkability. They want something that's low alcohol content. And I wish I would have uh, done the alcohol contents on these, and normally I do. It's just I was running short on time, and I didn't actually make a lot of notes when I was there. And I That's I not true. I, you know, we have to be honest. We were there yeah. to enjoy ourselves. We were. And we decided we that after we enjoyed ourselves, we were also getting into it a little bit. And mm -hmm. we were like, okay, we should talk about this. I mean, really. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there a lot of these are lighter. There's some. We have a couple notes on the things that were bigger and bolder and definitely had more presence in the alcohol spectrum. But these are, these are pretty much on the lighter end, which is kind of cool. Which is what you see in their flight. Their yep. flight is really an yeah. introductory flight. Yes, it is. Um, I wouldn't say. Yeah, there's not a lot of. Uh, ups and downs on the flavor profile on their flight. It was more of a introductory flight of here's what we can yeah. do And yeah. then if you want to experiment more if you like what the flight does then you can get into the more of the the flavorful beers yeah. and, and all that yeah. so which were great uh, which is probably the way you should do it as a brewing company. Yeah um, We did miss the tour. We were hoping to get the to the tour when we got there, but uh, they had Left the, uh, the the last tour had left unless you know a brewer, which we kind of saw while we were drinking. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Some of the people that got there afterwards and, and too uh, late. Yeah, I know. Too but, late. And we didn't know people. It's not what you know, too. You know, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Right. So the uh, the third one that we did was the sixteen counties. This was an interesting one. So uh, we we went out uh, the first night that we were here. We ended up uh, going out and getting some pizza. And we ended up uh, wanting to get some local beers. And this is one of the beers that I picked up. It was the sixteen counties. Which the reason I picked it up was a it was a local uh, brewery, yep. Allagash, yep. and two they they uh, highlighted a lot of the grains that are actually locally grown here in Maine, yeah. and that's why I wanted to highlight this one drink, and that's why I bought it the first time. And then uh, we honestly didn't drink it that first night, so it was good that we actually had this it in was, the flight. It was good. We were kind of surprised by this. And as far as the flights go, this was the one that popped out. I mean, mm -hmm. we both felt that this was the clear winner. It's like, okay, great. We got a couple of tastes, and then here's the one that's the palate opener. And you're like, oh, now I'm awake. I'm yeah. listening. I'm also drinking. I'm going to probably finish this glass. Uh, that's delightful. Now, this was, I, we felt like this one went away. And also, as far as being the local uh, main favorite, like I, I feel like this is the one that, that speaks to the local environment because they really are focusing on what's going on here and grabbing everything that they make this beer from here. So it's, that's, that's always good. Well, and for, for us in the Midwest, I would say that I'm a huge fan of Colorado beers because they are so local-centric. Uh, they try and get as many of the grains and the hops and everything from the local area as they possibly can. This 16 counties from Allagash is, uh, they're very local-centric. 
Um, they and, and there were some surprising notes, which we're going to get into later from Right, Outcast. yeah, yeah. Um, but um, uh, the fact that they are uh, highlighting the the local fair, the all, and not just in Portland, but across Maine in general, mm-hmm. was was really yeah. interesting. And and to get grains from sixteen different counties and to marry that into one drink was was very unique. And none of them from Colorado. No, none of them from Colorado, <laughs> but I, I use that as an allegory. Into no, this, no, this but segue. of course, yeah. I mean, this is the thing. Yeah, but that was a clear yeah. winner, like, yep. locally. That was a, I agree with you. That was a clear winner. Um, <laughs> so the next one was the Saison, the Saison Gratis. Uh, to me, the, when, I, uh, when I first tried this, uh, the, first beer, the, the first Saison Gratis, it was uh, the immediate notes for me were a Chardonnay. So any of you f- uh, people that have had a, uh, a Chardonnay wine, know the, kind of the, the flavor profile of that. And I will say, any of you that are getting into the sour beer category, that the, the yep. Chardonnay yep. tends to be a very prevalent flavor profile. This is not a sour beer, it's a Saison. And um, I will say it's, it's a very light introductory into the Saison category. Yeah, I felt like this was exactly that. Um, you know, a lot of times when we talk about Chardonnay, we think immediately California, and we think like this oaky, balmy, like incredible, like uh, vanilla, and, and a lot of just like intense toast on it. This was not that at all. I would think more like Old World, more Chablis. There was a little bit of chalk on this. It ended up being a little dry on the palate, mm-hmm. which was kind of cool. It was a surprise because uh, we were expecting something a little bit, you know, like full and and exciting but it ended up being uh pretty reserved and kind of old school which was good because the uh what was the second one we had uh that was that it was ended up being county was oh that was the two, two lights the two lights that was the other thing as far as wine goes yeah i mean this is not cake bread john i love you cake bread is awesome it has its place 100 percent. but you got to think more of like un oak chardonnay from california and there are some great uh options for this but if you go totally to chablis and you go un oak chardonnay you're going to be happy as a clam and it's going to be this this beer 100 percent the uh, the two lights was another one where we were I was like oh man this is uh, like Sancerish it has that kind of feel if we're gonna go into that wine uh, realm just a little bit because that's that I mean listen the tasting notes are what we're talking about here and those hops and the and you feel like you're you're tasting something from the area uh, and that the Chardonnay was awesome I mean it just it really came through with that uh, that saison in a way I didn't expect at all which was cool and I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the dry m- mouthfeel which was one that really we surprised had that a number me. of times yeah so the and the saison was really what brought it into the forefront yeah. was uh, it really is a is super dry mouthfeel. Uh, which shocked me for a beer because I've never had that with a beer. Like, <laughs> not not like, that often. <laughs> yeah, when, you, when you're drinking a beer, like it lit, wets the palate. And yeah, this, but it left me wanting more. That's the absolutely. Good news. Yeah, yeah, it, it was really good. Um, and then the uh, the final one on the flight was the uh, the curio. Uh, the well, I, I take that back. So no, the saison was the end of it. And yeah, this the saison the was the end of yeah. it. And then we 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 flipped into a second yeah. round because yeah. we thought, well, why not stay? Exactly because uh, of who we are. I mean, we decided it was to do raining. A second. Also, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, so what are you going to do? Run around in the rain? No, I mean, you're no. Gonna go. We decided to <laughs> keep on keeping on, right? So we did the curio, uh, C U R I E U X uh, curio. It's the uh, bourbon barrel aged uh, bourbon or bourbon barrel aged ale that they had. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And it was uh, it was actually surprisingly light. I've had a lot of barrel aged beers before yeah. that were heavy on the palate, heavy alcohol yep. forward. This was uh, quite surprising in the fact that uh, easy drinkability for a barrel aged. Yeah, and I was uh, blown away by that fact. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best bourbon barrel aged beer that I've ever had. Uh, but as far as drinkability, I'll, I'll give it a 10 on that one because it was a really int- a good introductory. If you want something, if you're trying to get into the barrel-aged beer category, it, it was a good one to get into. I think this was it. I think the best part of this was that it was a little bit lighter. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of times you get these barrel-aged beers and they are just, I mean, they're thick and they feel heavy. And you know you're only going to drink one. And I mean, I, I was reminding you of a pumpkin beer I had oh, yeah. uh, this last year that was... Uh, burned out. It was 17%, and yeah. I was just, I mean, I was flying by the time I was done with it, and I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm not having any more than that. This one, I feel like I could probably have two. This was in 11%, the 11%, 11% yeah. alcohol, which we, yeah. you know, we're like, okay, two's going to put me in a, the very happy place. 
But hey, whatever. I mean, you know, it it was light. It was it was the kind of beer I feel like I wasn't relegated to having only in the fall. I could probably have it, you know, throughout the year and be pretty happy with it. So exactly. and, uh, kudos I, to them. For I that. do I do kind of want to back this up though. The flight, the original flight that we had was kind of your typical three two to three ounce pour flight, and the second flight was really half pours. Yep. So they gave us um, they gave us an eight ounce glass, and they would do half pours. So we're looking four to five ounces per pour on each one of these that we're yep. doing right now. Which is why we're still alive. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, we should be honest. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, we didn't drink a lot of water tonight, unfortunately. We weren't as responsible right. as we should be, but we're on vacation, tomorrow. so whatever. We'll you know, be serious exactly. tomorrow. Yes, exactly. Maybe. Um, so the uh, the next one, the, the next one was an interesting category. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a Pilsner. Yep. And everybody's familiar with the Pilsner category. I mean, everybody that's drank beer has probably had a Pilsner, but this was a Pilsner with Britannomyces. And those of you that are not familiar with Britannomyces are probably not any sour beer, beer drinkers. And that's what I associate Britannomyces with, right. is uh, sour beers. And this was kind of the, uh, if you had sour beer yeast and you put it with uh, Pilsner, which is a crisp, clean, uh, sweet beer usually, mm -hmm. that's kind of what you get. Yep. But what it ended up being on the nose, even we said it was like uh, if you stepped onto a farm that's what it smelled like. Yep. Uh, the hay, the manure, yep. the 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 organic feel of a farm. That's kind of what you would smell when you drank this pilsner. The taste was a little different. It there there was a uh, there were some notes of sour to it, but there was also some crisp, clean notes to it. But it was really confusing. To, I felt to us. a little bit. I felt a little bit conflicted about this. Uh, Brett in the wine world is a problem sometimes with your wine. It can be an indicator of, of location, which is great because when it comes to France, you want a little bit of that here and there. Uh, but this particular beer, I feel like with the sweetness of the Pilsner and also the Brett, it came out to that kind of like sugary barnyard and I've never put those two things together before in a way that I felt like great about. Mm -hmm. If this had a little bit of punch of citrus in the middle, I think done. I'll drink another one. Thank you. Not a problem. Yeah, and John, I'm gonna agree with you. The uh, the cleanser, the the drinking water in, <laughs> in between beers is definitely a good cleanser. Uh, however, um, what I'm gonna say to you again is we are on vacation <laughs> and we decided to cleanse our palate with light beer, and yes. that's uh, that's yes. that's kind of the route we decided we, we to go did. tonight. So lighter beer, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, like that. Yeah. I mean, think think Bud Light. I mean, that's kind of we did not drink Bud Light I don't tonight. Always think Bud Light, yeah. but sometimes I do. Yeah. So. All right, uh, this next one. Uh, uh, we want to dedicate this next song yes, to, to Nancy. Nancy. Yes, yeah, we should create and we should create a whole song around we this one. We should have actually done that. Isn't this there was, one? Yeah. Is there Nancy? In, what is the song? No, there are a hundred songs, but I don't think there are any if Nancy I songs. If I knew a girl named Nancy. Nancy, um, she would be very... It's fancy. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm so the, Nancy. I'm, I'm going to replace the, Lola. With, Lola with Nancy. Okay, that's right, fine. So uh, clearly, uh, being able to have a song about this beer would be appropriate because yes. we both walked away from the tasting on this uh, feeling pretty strong. Yes. So if uh, it, if you look this up, uh, Allagash Brewing Company Nancy. It is uh, it is one of their sour beers. It is a copper sour beer, and the notes from it were fantastic. It was very complex. It mm -hmm. was way beyond any sour beer that I've ever had. It was uh, the, the, the smell of it, the taste of it, and even in, within the taste, there was the beginning and the end and the complexity in the middle. Yep. It was, it was, I can't say enough about this beer. It was uh, Well, and, the, and this amazing. had bread on it as well. Oh, absolutely. So very, this, very was the second, this was the second all, bread that we had. Well, yeah, and they're all uh, Belgian style. Right, of course. So they're going to be a heavy bread flavor. Right. Um, so, But this one, I think, balanced really nicely. This has a little bit of a cherry note in that goes, uh, that goes with the beer, and so the, that infusion of cherry then really led into so it, it, it mm -hmm. took us from like being a, a bright red cherry and then it the palette really developed into the bread with this dark cherry feel and then just led out the citrus and you just felt it kind of like go away peacefully coolly i was impressed by this mm -hmm. sitting there oh this was the one it was a red like if you looked at it it was not right but this is the one we said sherry yeah absolutely oh, so it was, yeah. i know those sherry are... sorry for those people who don't drink sherry you yeah. should be drinking sherry even though we're talking about beer but i mean this one if you're talking about a little bit of hazelnut on the end of this oh yeah and that 
I was shocked. I was so I was gonna I was gonna mention that. So to me, like I mean, you you have more of the nuances of the flavor. To me, it was like a a black cherry up front, mm. and then like a nutty flavor uh, in the end. But yeah. when you mentioned the hazelnut, I was like, oh, I totally get the hazelnut at the very end. It I know was, it was beautiful and it was complex and like every from uh, from the nose to sipping it mm -hmm. to actually in the mouth. To after you drank it and you breathed it out, there were notes that were completely different on every aspect of those, I, and I was very impressed. With yeah, it. we both walked away from that. Well, we didn't walk away; we kept coming back. That's yeah. the problem, Nancy. Yeah. Well, and when you, when you hear of a beer that is really complex in flavor, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get something on the nose, mm -hmm. um, both up forward when you put your nose into it, mm -hmm. and when you're drinking it. Those are two separate notes. And then when you put it on your lips and you actually start drinking it, that's one flavor. When you have the full mouth feel of the beer in your mouth, that's another flavor. And then after you drink it, that's another mouth feel. Yeah, and then once yeah. you start breathing out. Well, out through your nose, it's yeah. like. Phew. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was, it was unbelievable. Uh, John, we're not, we didn't get into, into the uh, porters, but we did have a black. So we're going to get to that here yep. in just a little bit. So, um, but the Nancy... Uh, the reason we're focusing so heavily on this one, it was completely amazing. Uh, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Mr. Hoffman, how you doing? I, uh, I, uh, I'm just sporting your gear over here, Pat. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, we did happen to mention that to a couple of distillers over there, yeah. so I was like, yep, and by the way. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> after we do the brewery tour here, Pat, if you want to stick with us for just a few minutes, I'm going to say that uh, we did do a distillery tour, and I did mention you quite heavily. It, so. was, it was good. Yeah, people, good. In, people in Maine now know who, uh, who and what's happening. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Don't done with the Nancy. Or we, I think we're done with the Nancy. All right, we, we, it's like you know, we we did our as best we could. Yeah. So. yeah. Welcome to Drink Talk, where the points don't matter. <laughs> 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 all right. um, so again, um, this is our second flight uh, that we did. Like, it might have been the third flight. We did the we did the middle. We had I don't know whatever. At this point, we didn't know well, what flight we were on. So the, the first flight was actually tasters. The, the second flight. flight was half pours. It was the half pours. And the third flight was actually specialty pours. No, no, no. The, we did four. Sorry. I'm, oh, I'm, man. I, listen, this He's, was a multi... This is a multi... I just hit this. We're not We're not even with you anymore. Okay, great. Um, we... Uh, so, the, whatever. We're in a flight. We just had those. We had the basic flight. We had mm -hmm. the ones we picked. And then we're finishing out all their offerings from oh, their main list. True, yeah. Which was good. Uh, the, the guys there were awesome. There were guys. There were girls. Everybody was awesome about saying, you need to try what you can try. And they luckily were pouring half pours, so you know, yeah, like so. yeah, they were very, very uh, good to us. Uh, we had yeah. a good time there. They were, uh, they were somewhat knowledgeable. What I will say is that we did not talk to any brewers there, which I would have liked to. It would have been really interesting, um, especially uh, to distinguish some of these, because I feel like some of what their offerings were were trying to develop. Mm -hmm. What they were doing, uh, you know, like trying to take the Belgian and expand it a little bit. And uh, I wanted to know more about that. And we, you know, everybody was able to talk a little bit about the peers, but it wasn't anything like... Right. They were knowledgeable, yeah. but they weren't right. like intricate knowledgeable. Right. And I'll get into that in one of the beers here yeah. that, uh, that I... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll get into that here. So um, I guess this next one, the uh, the Vance, uh that we had, that was, uh, that was the start of our second flight. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very crisp, clean, uh, but it was more of a... Uh, not really a sour beer, but there was sour notes to it. This was the strawberry. Yeah, um, which there were sour notes. There to were it. sour yeah. notes to yeah. it. It's definitely a sour beer. Um, the strawberry was so fascinating. Yeah. Uh, like what, I, what you said to me when you were talking about the hard candy, if if you remember, <laughs> if you remember the hard candy that actually came in packaging, like the wrap, the foil looked like a strawberry. Right. If you remember the green that top, yeah, I was remembering yeah, this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of what this beer tasted like. It it's not like that it was candy. synthetic strawberry. It felt like strawberry, but it was that strawberry flavor that just keeps More going. More like a syrup or like a yep. concentrate. Yeah, you're, the, it's there with you. Yeah. And then we, um, after, so that was kind of the note of that one. We don't have a whole lot to say about the Vance because. No, very yeah. strawberry. If you yeah. like strawberry, you're in. Yeah. It would be great with salad. Uh, the tri yeah. <laughs> Exactly. That's kind of what we were looking for. Like, what would you eat with this? And we we're like, right. uh, mm, salad with vinaigrette. And, yep. Or a dessert. I think that's it. Maybe. Could be. Exactly. I think we um, thought chocolate. 
I did. I did say dark, Although, uh, but it had to be a dark chocolate. Then yeah, I would eat with it. I've thought uh, chocolate many times. Yeah. Uh, so then we went to the triple, uh, mm -hmm. which was actually for a triple, a Belgian triple, was actually a very light drinkable uh, beer, and um, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I would say it wasn't uh, like one of my more more memorable triples that I've ever had, but I would say it was more the lighter version of the triples that I had. Right. Because uh, triples can be quite heavy sometimes, and this was a, a very light introduction to that. Um, I, John, yeah, prosciutto. <laughs> okay, there you go. We just had some for dinner. We were wishing we had the uh, strawberry beer. Yes. That yep. would be, I think that's that's actually an awesome pairing there. Yes. Thank you, John, for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. uh, Always. <laughs> yeah. So, th so then we went to the, uh, do, do I mention what you said at the bar? Um, no, I think it's better we don't. <laughs> okay. All we right. just, you know, we, we, we are trying to do the best we can with this and the triple, I'm telling you, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. I, but it, you're right. It was. Introductory triple. It was a triple. Yeah. It was a triple. Yep. And we knew it was a triple. But it, it it didn't it didn't make the the top ten plays of the day. Right, right exactly. Um, and then we went to the white, which for me I am not. I'm going to be honest with you. I am not a white beer fan. Uh, most but of the why? Uh, most Tell of, us why. Yeah, most of the white beers that I have um, think Bud Light because that is what I what every time I drink a white beer from anybody. All I think of when I drink it is Bud Light, and I'm like, why as a craft brewery would you make a beer that tasted like Bud Light? Um, and if you're trying to appeal to an audience that drinks uh, a common uh, brewery, uh, to me, it's, 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 it boils down to simple uh, money. I mean, if you're going to be able to drink a, a Bud Light at $1.50 or a craft Bud Light at $3, yeah. Yeah. what are you going to choose? I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's no nonsense. So yep. why would you create a white? Well, this one actually surprised me. It was closer to uh, a uh, PBR. And those of you that are fans of Pabst Blue Ribbon, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the first time that I had Pabst Blue Ribbon on tap. Yeah. You know, I've had it in, in the cans before, and um, I, I knocked <clears throat> it wholly uh, until I actually had it on tap. And I had a friend of mine that uh, we were out drinking one night, and um, uh, I saw that PBR was on tap, and I was like, ah, oh, PBR. He's like, well, have you had it on tap? And I'm like. You know, you're right. I've not had it on tap. <laughs> I should I should actually drink it before I knock it. So right. I had it, and I was wholly surprised at the flavor profile of PBR on tap. Yeah. And that's what, when I had this white from Allagash Brewing Company, I was very surprised, and it was a very flavorful white beer. And it, it yeah. reminded me of PBR. It is. And again, this is their first offering. This was the inspiration for the company itself, and so... I can see this is my introduction into Allagash when I first had this probably, I mean, it's probably been 10 live, years ago. You live on the East Coast. Yeah, so but us in the Midwest, like, we don't get Allagash right. Brewing well, Company. Sure. I mean, yeah. it hasn't really made its way as far, right. um, you know, but like I tried this close to 10 years ago and I was shocked. I was like, oh, this is really good. I'm always drawn away from things that have a ton of, uh, you know, like this has coriander, this has... Uh, some, uh, I think, a curacao orange peel as well. Oh yeah, it and uh, you know, and I feel like it's a it's a great beer. It's crisp. It's refreshing. It has a nice finish. And I thought this is a great beer. And I remember being thinking, well, I don't know if I could have like you know six of these, uh, but it's really it's a it's an excellent beer. And I came back to it today after probably a number of years of drinking it, and uh, and and saying, yeah, this is delicious. Now, I mean, being on site. It's great. Yeah. Being absolutely. as close to it as you're going to get, that's awesome. And, of course, that's why we drink local. Well, so. and, I, and I will tell you, when we were there, I mean, we ended up going about, what was it, 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. On a Sunday? Absolutely. And if you gone any later, uh, there was a huge line. Super so packed. It is yeah. It is the place to be yeah. on a Sunday I afternoon. I think with or without the weather. It oh, was, absolutely. It was definitely packed. Yep. So after the white, we ended up, I um, mean, where do you go from that? So we decided to go on the black. black yes. Exactly. Uh, so, exactly. Uh, yep. One flavor profile spectrum <laughs> to the next. They um, called this kind of a stout style, didn't they? It did, but it was a very mellow stout. It was very easy drinkability for a black beer. I've had very heavy flavor forward blacks. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. was a very mellow, easy introductory yep. black beer. I, I would say the drinkability on this one was very high. So mm -hmm. I, I will give them kudos on that one. 
just a little bit of sweetness on this, but it, it again, it's, and I, I use that very loosely because it's not really a sweet beer, but it did come across with just that nice bit of balance that was like, oh yeah, this is great. Uh, yeah, a little bit. You could say milk stout, black lager, if you've ever had a black lager. Like, I, I felt like there were some notes in there with this. And I think that's the, again, them trying to, to put something together that's a little different than what they have been doing. Uh, and, and leaning in some different directions, seeing how far they can expand what the, what the Belgian style is. Uh, yeah, Sam Smith's like, that's my favorite stuff. But this is, this doesn't have quite the, uh, the weight on the palate as, as a classic stout. This has a little bit more of, of the, uh, the lightness and I feel like it, it drinks really well. It was so good. So good. Absolutely. And then, then, uh, the middle of the road here that we had, um, another red, we had a, another Saison. This was another red drink yeah, this that was we had. their full, like they had the Saison gratis and then they had this one that the was, Saison, that, the Saison actually stuck out this for more farmhouse style yeah very a bit rustic. More rustic yeah rustic was the word we for, came yeah through. that's that's i think when we were trying to think of a flavor profile if you if you think if you think of uh saisons um they're very kind of uh, citrusy rustic uh gritty flavor forward profile mm -hmm. this this to us that fit what this typical saison the other one the saison uh, gratis i believe was yep. the name of it yeah um, yep. that one was a lighter version this, definitely this one is more this is of the, the older older typical brother yeah. Saison. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely a lot of little it had a good bite on the uh on the front end which was which was really nice and then had some good balance between the citrus and the and the the flavors here i was really pleased with this one yeah yeah it was good then one. we went way oh yeah we went way off. They, I, so when you go to Allagash, they've got their big sign right here, and it's got boom, 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 all of their beers, and you're like, okay, great, this is what it is. And then you duck left, and there's a small sign that says special pours. Hey. And at this point, we're thinking we should probably have something I mean, special because we're feeling special. Exactly. <laughs> and it's time to have something special. So we, I, I asked and she said, well, they're all kind of a tart. They're all kind of a Belgian. Let's just continue on. This was interesting stuff. So I picked a two beers. And they what were, are we... So they weren't, they weren't bombers. They were more like... No. Uh, they, they were probably, if you were to split them, they, they would were be like, half pours yeah. of a pint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. they were the small bottles, but yep. they were all corked. They were all corked. Yep, yeah, all, all corked. Cork yep, bottles. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah, exactly. So the first one that we had uh, was Cool Ship. Cool uh, Ship. Which would be their, like, their entry-level sour that we had. It was very well done. Uh, very easy drinkability. Uh, it was a mature sour. Yeah. So those of Much you... Much more so. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you were thinking of getting into the sour category, um, this this isn't something that was uh, like new to the market. You don't want to drink it on tap. This would be yeah. like way mellow. If you can find this, yeah, absolutely. you should definitely get a hold of this. Yeah. I was... I, we, we both remarked that this was like the... This is not just like, oh, I'm stumbling onto a sour. This is the way you want to be introduced to something. This is the formal introduction. This is like, oh, I'm in good hands. I've had something that's really well produced. Uh, I think it's like eight months and then four months in the bottle. They really, I mean, they really, mm -hmm. did, it's, it's clearly been well taken care of. And the, the production here felt all like polished and mm -hmm. it felt comfortable and I really felt like I was I was drinking something that somebody had uh, had hands on and I thought oh yeah this is something I would share to somebody who doesn't know anything about it who I want to say you should drink this and they're going to drink it yeah <laughs> cool ship that was cool the name ship. Of it. yeah yep. C O O L S H I which we saw later oh that was the distillery that did that yep but that's the open vat isn't it the cool ship yeah yeah, yeah exactly. that's how they cool yeah. that out so it's a little faster it's yeah, yeah. We'll, anyway we'll research. get here in the, yeah we'll get here in a minute uh, <laughs> so the second one that we had was uh, shiro's delight uh, this was a little more uh, complex flavor and it, uh, what found, what I found interesting on the bottle is they said it was a mixed fermentation, which I had never seen before on a bottle before. So I actually asked them, um, which I was really hoping for from a brewer's perspective, uh, what right. that meant. Right. Um, which um, uh, the answer actually was very simple: uh, mixed fermentation. Uh, fermentation happens because of yeast. Yes. And so this was a mixed yeast. And they used a uh, Saison yeast was the main yeast that mm -hmm. they used. Uh, and then they did a open fermentation, which gets all the natural flora or natural yeast or wild yeast. Mm -hmm. And they mix that in with the Saison yeast. And that's uh, what they get, mixed fermentation. Right. And it makes things a little bit more, well, I should say a little less unreliable or uh, less reliable as far as like how things are going to come out. Because... 
wild yeasts don't always react the same way and that's Absolutely. why you know regular you, you put the yeast in that you want you get something out and it's a little bit more predictable so if you're looking for more local beers local centric beers yep. this would be a way to do that this is the do, i mean yeah. i hate to say it but this is like the taste of maine because you're oh, going to get what was in the air at the time they made the beer Absolutely. and you know along with the like the, the 16 county that we had before like no not yeah. sick you're not sick john you love it you enjoy it yeah. you want to visit yeah it, it does taste like a sour beer so you have to be kind of in that in that uh frame of mind to drink this kind of beer so that was our complete tour yeah, of uh, allagash brewing company and it was we, awesome oh yeah we had a lot of fun there was a ton of people there uh they have a uh a tap room and they also have the brewery directly behind the tap yep. room. They have a, uh, a, a nice place outdoor for, space. Uh, yep, yep. That, that's like more of a three season outdoor space yep. where yep. you can be out yep. there in the winter. Clearly. They have a, uh, a place where you can buy the beer, uh, you know, after hours, uh, after they close the bar. There's a place where you can buy, and they have it even in the uh, in coolers. So oh, yeah. Can, yeah, so just like a, a supermarket where you would buy the, the beer. And this there. is really not far outside of Portland either. No. So, I mean, probably airport to this is less than a half an hour hour so it's uh that's i mean it, this is a really easy and obviously you know a simple thing to do for an afternoon it's going to make you really happy oh absolutely so um there was a, a fair amount of parking i would say easy parking and in the area yeah. there's a couple other breweries in the area this is a total this, industrial area yeah there were there were I think probably three breweries, three, and, three breweries. Yeah. and uh, I mean clear from the sign there was a sign that said breweries and it had you know like arrows in every direction. Areas, I was yeah. like you just go everywhere you want. There's Doesn't a matter where you go. You're gonna uh, find a brewery. There's food over there. I mean it's not just it's not just printers and you know people making uh, you know auto parts. It was like literally there's food, there's drink, there's all kinds of stuff. So it's it's become. A, a grounded brewery area and that's that's kind of awesome because it's clear that the the area is dedicated to that when they have the destinations so they have the main bus tours the main brewery bus tours yeah that we couldn't They're, get on yeah. and we love it yeah. we'll try and do that another so time if Let's you come to Maine um, if you're trying to get into those plan and ahead yeah plan, plan at ahead. least a week ahead it's at least popular yes very okay popular. we're yep. going on all right, moving on to the distilleries. We went to Maine Craft Distillery, which mm -hmm. is uh, one of the more uh, broad distilleries here in Maine, but they are very local centric, at least like Maine local centric. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily Portland, but uh, more broad in Maine. And uh, yep. they are a farm to flask distillery, so they try and, be, uh, again, they try and, uh, they're trying to be as, mo as local centric as they possibly can. Um, if you notice the shirt that I'm wearing, the Lonely Oak Distillery, <laughs> those of you in the Midwest uh, that know it, they are a, uh, they call themselves the uh, Seed to Spirit Distillery, mm -hmm. uh, where they are farmers, they grow the crop, they harvest the crop, they create the mash, they distill it, yep. and put it in the bottle. That's kind of what they're trying to be here, um, and we're going to get into that here in a minute. Uh, the first one that we had was the uh, the whiskey, the 50 stone that they had. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, this was a, a very new barrel forward. Um, if you've ever had a bourbon uh, that was right, which bourbons are out of new barrels, um, sweet uh, on the palate, that's what this tasted like. It didn't uh, taste like it had been aged very long, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. I'm yeah. just saying that's what the flavor profile mm -hmm. is. It was more bourbon than whiskey. But they considered it a whiskey, so I'm, I'm guessing that uh, there were some notes in there that they couldn't uh, consider it a bourbon. Well, it didn't have any corn in it, which we found later. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which was shocking because I was like, wow, there's a lot of like the sweetness of the corn here. And she yeah. said, nope, nope, 100% barley. Oh, there you go. So okay. bourbon, bourbon has to be 51% corn. Yeah. So yeah, we're uh, out. Yeah, exactly. So that's why they call it a whiskey. But you can definitely <laughs> taste the newness. Uh, right. But what we found out later is a lot of the barrels that they get are locally made here in Maine. It's they they have Maine white oak barrels that they make. We gotta here. find this guy. We gotta find this guy. Yeah, I know. There's one here. guy apparently. A, well, I mean, you know, this is the, their source there who said that there's one guy making barrels out of Maine oak and white oak. Like Maine white, white oak. White oak. It's gorgeous, and the the barrels are. Gorgeous. Yes, they are. And this, but he's he's the lonely Cooper in Maine, apparently, and he's got a lot of business from them. I don't know why a lot of other people aren't doing this. The uh, the barrels clearly impart some really unique notes and uh, and drive a lot of like I think site specific uh, notes to these uh, these beverages. And I was I was 
really pleased with that that they were they were dedicated to sourcing their barrels so so locally. Yep, and they actually had a barrel aging room that they showed us. Uh, in the Beautiful. We, we you weren't can rent it. Yeah, we weren't rent able. It. Yeah, we weren't able to get the full tour there. Uh, but one of the bartenders, she was. Uh, she was like, I'll give you the, the condensed, the Cliff Notes version of the tour. And she gave us a, yeah. a small tour, which I was very impressed with. Yeah. Um, I didn't, there's, they don't use uh, copper stills. They do, like the original uh, distiller there does have a copper still. Mm -hmm. Not that he uses it, but that's what he started with. And they have a lot of the stainless steel stills. But what I did notice there that I hadn't seen at other distilleries was they did have the white oak barrel, um, basically a pool. Um, and they were actually aging in this giant pool and some of the fermentation was going on in one pool, uh, aging was going on in the other. Uh, it was open air, so they're getting the local flora, the local yeast, the wild yeast strains that are going on in there. And some of us, because we yeah. were in there. So yeah. we're going to be part of this next uh, this next batch, yeah, exactly. for good or for bad. Yeah, yeah. for better or for worse, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, I, but I was very impressed with their barrel room, which you can actually rent out, which was an old cooler. And you can see that when you, the door that you enter has yeah. the, the, the old like restaurant cooler feel. Yep. And, Pretty cool. Uh, very cool, very cool. Um, you actually decided to have the gin. Well, um, I, I'm a gin guy. I I love it. It's like you know, grown up vodka. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I mean, not, <laughs> I should. Well, it's what? No, I'm sorry. It's vodka for adults. Um, the uh, I mean, gin is awesome. I've had so many great gins. There are so many great uh, distilleries in and around New York. Uh, we get access to stuff from all over the country that is amazing. And so I feel kind of spoiled. So I was interested in trying to find this. They have two gins here, and I went with their classic gin. Uh, it's called Alchemy, and uh, everything is bottled very simply, labeled very simply. It's kind of, you know, it's just really clearly driving towards the spirit itself. They're, they're only a small batch. They really are. Distillery. Yeah, they don't, yeah. They, we're not talking about pallets and pallets of this stuff. It's just small batch stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so she poured a little of this over a rock, and, uh, and I mean, this is immediately on the nose. There's just a lot of... Uh, I mean the classic juniper you get a lot of the herbaceousness of this and then you go straight into uh, What surprised me the most about this was a nice round uh, Smoothness and almost a little sweet character of this which I was shocked at yeah, uh, not There's no there's no heavy hitting punch on this smooth really relaxed I felt like this was a gin again drinks like a young gin uh, but really, I think, and, and this is only triple distilled on this. Yeah, and for, yeah, for yeah. me, I'm, I'm not a gin person. Right. Um, and just because to me, a gin is like tasting Christmas. It's like drinking a Christmas tree. There's Who doesn't the, love Christmas? I know, right? We can but sing I don't Christmas want to. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Christmas in July. <laughs> National <laughs> Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah, all right. Drop the cat again. <laughs> um, so uh, to me, it's it's the juniper berries give it that heavy Christmas taste. And yep. this gin actually was more of a uh, a minty uh, minty flavor. Yeah, maybe a little spearmint almost. It yeah. had that, you know, that it's not peppermint, which is bitey. It's a little bit more of the spearmint kind of flavor. Yeah, which I yeah. Was good. John, I agree with you. It tastes like pine needles, <laughs> like which, which is where I was going with this. It's, it's also a, good with milk. Yeah, it tastes tastes like Christmas. <laughs> exactly. So the next one is one that I have never seen anywhere. This is something that a distillery has never done that I have personally seen. Uh, and those of you that are watching, please no. comment and let me know if you've ever yeah, seen this before. Please. So. Please. Uh, uh, <laughs> this was the uh, Chisunuk. Uh, it is a carrot spirit made from carrots. I have never seen a spirit made from carrots. And we tried a little bit of a shot from this, and you can taste the carrot notes from this. Uh, but our question to them was, A, why would you make something this? And, and not from a, a, a malicious standpoint. We're like honestly asking. No, we want what, rabbits to eat carrots. Yeah. We don't want to take rabbits' yeah. food. But you why know. would you? Why would you make something from carrots? And right. then B, what do you make with this? Because honestly, when you go to this distillery, what we were finding was they don't showcase the alcohol that they make as much uh, by itself. It's more of a they they showcase their alcohol in drinks, and so. In seeing that they do that, I was like, well, what would you make uh, with this drink? And so uh, she said, well, I, I will make you this. And it was in a, I don't know what kind of It was of in a coop. It was in yeah. a coop that okay. was dipped in uh, in a cayenne, uh, salted cayenne rim. Yeah. Uh, a little lemon, obviously, on the rim to hold on the, uh, the cup pepper. Oh, sorry, lime. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
And then, uh, you know, inside that, she did... Uh, a habanero simple syrup. Yep, yep. So uh, those of you that have watched this program uh, know what my uh, view on simple syrup is. If, if you're buying simple syrup, I will shame you into that because... <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's called simple for a reason. Yeah, exactly. But this, this was a habanero simple yep. syrup. So there was, mm -hmm. there was some heat notes to it, but it wasn't overdone. It wasn't like... Mm -hmm. I've, I have had some jalapeno simple syrup that is very jalapeno forward and I uh, this habanero simple syrup was very uh, simple syrup forward yeah. with like some heat notes of habanero mm -hmm. which I was uh, actually very intrigued with especially with and the grateful kind. for I think yeah, absolutely. it's you know obviously the spice with the, the challenge with any vegetable is obviously that they are not I mean you have to figure out how to combine them you can just eat carrots if you really want to eat carrots or you can just drink carrots in this case uh, but it, it really needs some some components that are going to balance that, and the heat is one thing that really works well with that little bit of uh, of carrot flavor. I will say, as a side note, this isn't like juicing. Okay, this is not uh, <laughs> like juicing carrots. Uh, you're not going to no. get the uh, carrot no. profile uh, heavy. Uh, uh, there are carrot notes to it, but it was very very subtle. I think what we can we can really take away from this is that in Maine there are a lot of carrots left over and they had to figure out what to do with them. Exactly. And exactly. we are making beverages out of them. Exactly. Yeah. So um, when we were there we did sit at the bar and as you sit at the bar you tend to notice <laughs> things at the bar and yes. I did notice that at this distillery there were some taps uh, on hand and which I found interesting from a distillery standpoint that there were taps. Uh, because usually you associate those with brewers. So I said, hey, um, I noticed you have some taps on hand. And so they told me what was on hand. Uh, but there was one in particular that was standing out, literally like a uh, <laughs> like a stump. Like, a tr <laughs> like there was a tree stump. Some steel log. Yeah, yeah. With, a, with a tap on it. And I was like, hey, what's, the, what's that one sticking out there? And they actually make a homemade ginger beer. Yes. Um, which those of you that are a fan of Moscow Mules... That is what is in a Moscow Mule is a ginger beer, and uh, ginger beer is non-alcoholic. Uh, well, ginger syrup is not alcoholic. Yeah. Ginger beer does have a, technically a small amount of, of that because it is yeasted. Not, not enough to be considered an alcohol product because you can buy it in well, the soda aisle. Depends on where you're going. But, guess, you know. Anyway, yeah, too, you know yeah. that's the thing. But yeah, I mean, this is this is primarily just you know it's it's a lot of ginger, and they do this all on property, which is awesome. I mean, in in addition to the, all the other things that they've got going on, they've got a little side hustle with their ginger beer. And uh, it brings a lot of life because they, they can do the meal. They are actually going to do a vodka coming in two, I think they said in the next month. I should yeah. say soon, soon, yeah, soon. One to two months. Uh, they haven't been able to, uh, to get their facility to the point where they could do vodka, you know, where they felt like it was. I know that I'm saying they can't do vodka, but they do gin. But they wanted to make sure that their vodka was uh, on par before they, they put it out. And it's coming. And, Which is uh, interesting for a distillery because usually distilleries start with vodka, right? And, and they then, didn't, right? Uh, which is a very interesting note, right? Um, that so most, your Moscow Mule, yeah, I did not have with vodka um, because yeah. uh, when I asked for okay. it, um, I said, "Hey, um, I, I'm used to ginger beer with vodka." Um, making a Moscow Mule, and they said, "Well, we don't have vodka." And I said, "Well, yeah. I'll I'll have it with rum." And there and wasn't any Grey Goose under the bar. They so didn't. Yeah, was, exactly. Which was fine. Which yeah. was fine. We're, yeah, fine. completely fine. They only yeah. had their own spirits available, um, and they did have a, a spiced rum. I wouldn't say it's uh, close to uh, Captain Morgan. Um, I wouldn't say it's close to Sailor Jerry's, which is more of my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's its own category. It it is a spiced rum, but uh, the one that I had uh, was not anywhere. I I couldn't even quantify it with with. If you've had Captain Morgan, if you've had Sailor Jerry's, it's it's a lot different. It's a, it's a different flavor profile, and I, I don't know how to describe it without having a craft. If you've never had a craft spiced rum before, it's it's hard to quantify that because uh, depending on the spices that they use is going to be the flavor mm -hmm. profile of that. And this was delicious, but not of the, uh, it wasn't as sweet. I'll put that as, uh, it wasn't as sweet as a Sailor Jerry's or a Captain Morgan, but it was uh, definitely notes of the rum that you could taste, uh, which is a molasses based uh, spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was very pleased 
uh, with it. It was it was delicious. And it made it made I think a good Moscow mule. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could probably could call it not a Moscow mule, but I mean, I call it a Caribbean mule. It's a Caribbean mule. Yeah. I mean, that's what it ended up being, and it yeah. was delicious. I'm sure there's a specific name for it, but I don't. Right, know it right. But now, you had so it. You fine. had so you had the ginger beer by itself. I right? just had the ginger beer alone, mm -hmm. and I think it was great. It's not as, uh, as spicy, heavy. The first I was telling the first ginger beer I had was so I thought ginger beer, okay, whatever. But I had one in. I do see a note here, uh, John. Sorry, you know I'm I'm gonna say kettle one is good, uh, but I'm gonna, <laughs> what I'm gonna say right here is uh, the Lonely Oak Distillery. You're gonna have to try their their vodka. <laughs> And that's John, what I'm say. listen, John. I know you're in New Jersey. I'll get a bottle of Lonely Oak. We'll yeah, meet. It, we'll we'll yeah. do a little trade. It'll go, be fine. go up to Connecticut. They, actually, be fine. Yeah. they actually distribute in Connecticut. Oh, so. perfect. Yeah. it's good. It's not yeah. far. It's yeah. not far. Yeah, there's a train at least six times a day, yeah. so we'll be good. All right, moving uh, on. Moving but no, on. the ginger beer was awesome. Uh, not as super spicy. My first ginger beer was in Bermuda. It like knocked my palate back because it was so spicy and so intense. And uh, I've fallen in love with it ever since. And I, you know, there's there's the fever trees, there's the local uh, ginger beers. I make my own ginger beer. It's like it, it's one of those things where it's. I know it's all about taste, but this one really balanced well uh, with their. Oh, John's in Nebraska. Really? I, right. I thought you were in Jersey. Sorry, John. I oh. love you. But anyway, Lonely, ginger Lonely beer. Oak is in Iowa. You're so gonna you you're can gonna get it's it. even closer than Connecticut. So yeah. that's even better. <laughs> anyway. Ginger beer, uh, local. It was awesome. It was definitely a good addition for them, and uh, that was that. I was excited to do that, but I had to have something after that because I'd only had a little bit of gin, and so I jumped in and I said, "Hey, uh, we tasted your whiskey. Can you do a Gold Rush?" And they're like, "Well, sure." I mean, Gold Rush is like a, a super classic, super classic cocktail. Uh, it's kind of had a little bit of a resurgence here and there. But it's essentially, um, you know, just a, 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 an easy sour. There's a, a little lemon juice, uh, a single part of lemon juice. Um, there's a, a one part of honey syrup, which is usually a little heavier. Mm -hmm. And then there are two not, parts. Not much of a simple syrup. It's not like simple syrup. It's no, a but it's yeah. a honey syrup. I mean, that's the thing. The honey is mm -hmm. what we want to get in this. And that pairs well with usually a bourbon. But in this case, because there is a little bit of a nice roundness to their whiskey, uh, which we have to say was a Highland whiskey that had some peat oh, in it. Yeah, I know there was like some we didn't things even happening. Get into it, yeah, he didn't even want to tell us that it was a Highland whiskey. He was yeah. like, "Well, it's kind of a Scotch. It's not a Scotch. Don't say it's a Scotch." So we, uh, they, they technically throw a little peat. I think this is even local Maine. Local. So that that's what surprised me most. So the peat that they get is not from Scotland. They actually get the peat from Maine. Which I was blown away. I and any of you Scotch drinkers out there that know what peat is from Scotland, it's like the bogs. It's like the the earthy dirt that you get the 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 campfire flavor of a, a yeah. Scotch. I mean, I don't that's, think Scots even want people to know there is peat in anywhere but right. Scotland. I right. think that's dangerous to yeah. even put that out there. So maybe don't tell anybody. But but, but I guess if uh, in, if it's going to be anywhere here in America, I guess Maine is the closest no, thing to I, Scotland. I think Maine's this. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Well, yeah, we're as close as we're gonna get. Yeah. But so we, I, this all worked together. There's a little bit of the smoke. There's a little bit of the sweet from the barley. Mm -hmm. There was uh, that tiny bit of peat note. I mean, really tiny bit, but it's there. And uh, it, we, we threw that in with the, with the honey syrup and the lemon, and it makes this really delightful gold rush. And I was like, oh, this is great. Can, can you explain what the gold rush is? I know you kind of touched on it a little bit, but because they didn't even know what the gold rush was uh, when you actually made it. Um, so they, they didn't well, ask I mean, they didn't know. I mean, it's again, it's one of those cocktails that's back there. If you think about the components of it, lemon juice is pretty pretty common. There was uh, the honey syrup. This is also a really classic uh, ingredient. When you go way back to co early cocktails, it's what about? It's it's the kind of stuff that you have around you, and uh, you know, having whiskey or having bourbon. Having some honey, that's not a big deal. Getting access to the lemon, okay, fine. For the people that don't have scurvy, they got access to it. And they put this together in a cocktail. It's satisfying. It's got that warm, summery feel to it. And, uh, and together, it just makes a, it makes a great uh, cocktail. So if you haven't gotten this, go out and, and do this. You can do it at home. Nice little shaker. Put it over a big rock, and you're done. I mean, this is it. This is your evening. Uh, July's over. Head into August with this, and you're going to be real happy. Nice. And uh, on one final note, I mean, that was kind of it that we had out the distillery, but uh, on one final note, so they had, uh, when you went to the restrooms there, uh, which one, <laughs> so, the, so what I got to say on the, uh, the pulls, so when you were in the restroom and you came out, the pulls uh, on the door handles were actually right. 
full-on axis, which was really pretty cool. I mean, very manly. But uh, uh, the wall that you faced as you exited the restroom was a chalkboard. And I'm talking, you know, floor to ceiling, wall to wall, probably, what would you say, uh, eight feet tall by about 20 feet wide? 20 feet, it had to have been, yeah. Easy. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that really was huge. Yeah. It was clearly a space for you to not go back to your table and be busy while you were still kind of exactly. happy from your beer. Which was pretty, your pretty cool. I mean, there, honestly, there was somebody that actually traced a full-on human uh, on the chalkboard, like somebody stood against the chalkboard and they we trace in there. Yeah, who that so, is. Uh, yeah, no idea. But no. so uh, I was looking at this and I noticed that in the top right hand corner, so this was maybe about seven or eight feet uh, right. up in the air, uh, so you had to get up on a chair, which is what I did. I, oh, I, right. I ended up, that's I, what yeah, we do. I ended up grabbing yeah. a chair and uh, I ended up tagging uh, Drink Talk there and I will post. Uh, the uh, drink talk. You're tag. gonna have to post that picture because yeah, it was pretty post, awesome. I will post that. I wish I had there. actually, if I'd known what he was doing, but yeah. it was a, such a clandestine effort. He was over there by himself, like you know, doing this thing. And I, if I'd known, I would have been over there taking a picture of him. To, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's so, fine. Oh, John, blueberry blue syrup. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the blueberry. Uh, so there you have what's oh, called man. a. Uh, what was it called? The blueberry shine. Blueberry shine, blue, blue shine, blue shine, blue yeah. shine. That's what so, it was. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was a 70, uh, 70 proof. So thirty five percent alcohol. So not yeah. not technically a whiskey. Uh, not really not technically a spirit. Uh, but not a schnapps. It was it was more alcohol content than a yeah. schnapps, but less than a spirit. Um, and it uh, it was a little blueberry forward, but they ended up putting it with lemonade, which was. Pretty fantastic. Actually. This is a classic combo for the, uh, the 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 fruit combo with the lemonade, like strawberry lemonade. We all go to those kind of classic combos, but the blueberry spirit with the lemonade was killer. They had done this in a 90 proof uh, a few years back, and they decided to bring it down to 70. And they are now, I mean, this was going, this was like, we watched uh, so many of these go mm -hmm. out in front of us. We were like, oh, yeah. oh, we should probably have one of those. And we did, and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, when we went back on our tour, there were pallets of these in cans, clearly meant to take over the world in a very effective way. Yep. Um, they've got these at some local stadiums. They've got these in some venues. Uh, this is a beverage you should be watching for because uh, it's definitely something that's going to be coming out. Uh, it's one of their, it's one of, the, they said this is of all of their spirits that they sell, of all the liquors that they sell, this is the one that goes out the most often. And I think it's because they put it together in a really smart cocktail and it just works. I do want to touch on the, um, um, because you didn't mention the uh, blueberry syrup. Um, and I know that uh, we are in Maine, which is next door to New Hampshire, and I'm sure they have blueberry syrup. And we talked about the blueberry uh, shine or blue shine that they had, but you also had an apple uh, brandy. I tasted the apple brandy, uh, not the normal hit of brandy, which is you know this is sometimes is just you know mind blowingly sharp. Uh, this was really relaxed, super easy. It reminded me of maybe um, you know like a pear brandy or some a pear cognac, like some of that kind of area where you've got. Uh, a little bit of that bitterness, but it goes right away, and then you get right into this uh, apple flavor. And it's very apple cidery, I would say, and I think the bartender described this very well. It drinks a little bit like um, a heavier hitting uh, apple cider. And I didn't ask about where they source their apples from. I'm assuming this is also a local affair. They're very um, local. Central they're, there, I right? mean, everything seems to come from, you know, right around as, as far as like within the state. Uh, they certainly have enough resources from uh, you know from the environment and from from the uh, growers around to to get everything. So I don't see why it couldn't be. But uh, this is this was a really nice easy addition. Again, for people who don't drink brandy, this would be the evil starter that will make sure. you drink brandy for every every day afternoon. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, all in all, uh, final notes, I uh, had a blast just going out there and, and oh, seeing yeah. them. Um, I, I, I think that it was a very good introduction into the local fair here in Maine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to go and see some of the other fair uh, that's available. And uh, I, I was impressed in the, uh, the, the local 
uh, of the, the, the breweries and the distilleries where they try and uh, get as local as possible with the ingredients and all that. Uh, that's a, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, coming from the Midwest in a farming community, I am a fan of trying to uh, rally the support of the local community in all the ingredients and everything. So I will give much kudos to Allagash Brewing Company and to Maine Craft Distilleries. Uh, they do an awesome job there. I was, um, I didn't know a whole lot, and in fact, I've never had uh, main beers or main spirits, and I was uh, really impressed uh, with everything that I had tonight. Uh, there yeah. were some notes that were, um, I would say, uh, uh, common, um, and not in a bad way. Uh, they, they actually hit the mark in the, the areas that they were trying to hit, mm -hmm. uh, but I also would say that I was surprised in some of the uh, the notes that I hit. And uh, that really speaks a lot to the main characteristics in, in trying to be as local centric as possible. Because I know that uh, when you try and do as local as possible, you are kind of limited uh, in the flavor well, profiles. You, you, that you can, can be, yeah, you, can you can be. be. Yeah. And I think if you're smart about it, and I clearly think, you know, I, people who are exceeding like, uh, like Aliash, they're really excelling at what they do. They've been smart about what their offerings are, and they have entered the market, uh, at least on the Eastern Seaboard, I think, really solidly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I imagine this is going to continue to grow for them, and uh, I would I would think they're going to be moving west, you know, without without any problem. I don't, and I don't know, honestly, the distribution level of uh, Allagash or Maine Craft Distilleries. I did not ask them. Uh, uh, be, honestly, because we did not get a chance to talk to the brewers or the distillers there, uh, which was kind of a disappointment. But honestly, uh, we it didn't. It was Sunday. We, it's yeah, we laid back. Yeah, we know. didn't make an appointment to go there. We just right. went there, uh, just kind of hoping for the best, and we were actually pleasantly surprised with what we got. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I was very happy and pleased with everything that we had. Um, do I wish that we could have talked to some of the brewers and distillers? Absolutely. But honestly, we didn't make an appointment. We just we just kind of walked in and just kind of hoped, um, which uh, this is a smaller community. I was actually honestly surprised. You said this. Uh, somebody looked up, was it you that looked up the, the, the population of uh, Portland, Maine? Um, I honestly thought that it was a much higher than it was, but well, we're sixty six thousand. Yeah, that's people? it. It's not a huge. Yeah. It's not a huge place. Everybody thinks the western uh, or the eastern east east coast is just full of huge cities and whatever. And I, you forget that up here, uh, there, it's just not densely populated. Mm -hmm. There's an incredible amount of just trees and beauty and water mm -hmm. and and lakes and everything up here is just I, it's awesome. And uh, it's really clear that the people that are here are committed to the product they're making. And, uh, and Portland feels small, but it also feels like it's, a, it's, it's, got, it's grown up and it's educated itself and it's doing good things. Uh, that's, that's a uh, very good point, actually. Yeah, yeah because I, I mean, that's I, totally different. Yeah, you know? I, was, I was blown away not only from the fact that uh, because I had heard that Portland was the, uh, Maine's largest city, um, which it is, uh, but uh, when you come here, you're actually, uh, you know, what, what do you want to do? Because they have whatever you want to do. Do you, you want to go on brewery tours, distillery tours? You want to go on, uh, um, you know, you want parks, you want recreational, you want hiking, you want biking. I mean, they, they've got a little bit of everything for everybody uh, here, which I was very surprised when I learned that, you know, the, this town is, uh, max, or not max capacity, but at uh, the population level, 66 uh, thousand people and I'm sure that uh, in in tourist season and uh, with the greater uh, Portland metropolitan area that it exceeds 66,000 but uh, still uh, Incredible. Yeah, yeah. still what seems they have to offer town. is yeah. it, it's definitely worth going it, again If you if you have a chance to get out here, you need to be making a, a trip out to Portland It's it's worth mm -hmm. it's worth coming up for for sure. Yeah uh, we had a we had a blast going to the brewery and distillery, and we're hopefully yeah. uh, gonna check out some more of the local flavor here. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully. I mean, thank you for inviting me over. To, oh, to, I mean, you know, yeah. this is not my normal, but uh, yeah. you know, it was fun to be a part of this, and and it's always good to go taste. I mean, hey. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my name's Brian. I'm with uh, Drink Talk, and, and I'm uh, Ken McQueen. Yeah, and my brother-in-law. So uh, thank you for joining yeah, me on this sure. one. And uh, you know, I don't know honestly if we're gonna be posting again uh, this week, but uh, we're gonna try and yeah. do that. Uh, depending on the availability on what's going on we are here with family so we do want to focus on that uh, because yeah, we are on vacation and yeah, again because absolutely. we want to live a long life yeah so. <laughs> yeah happy wife happy <laughs> life yeah back to so, that exactly so but thank you for joining us uh the ones that were here on the talk john uh i see you keep posting if you want to keep uh posting those questions i'm going to answer them next uh here in the oh, next yeah. uh, 24 hours or so 
I will uh, I will comment on those. Absolutely. Um, if you're coming on afterwards and you're watching this video, go ahead and comment on the video. I will answer those questions. As oh, they and come if in. you're from uh, Maine, definitely shout out and uh, have some comments about what's going on because we we love to hear from people who are out here. We're gonna make sure we tag uh, Allagash and and the Maine Distillery. We 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 love to hear from any comments people that are absolutely are out in this area too. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for joining us and uh, you guys have a good night and uh, blessings to you. All right, take care. <laughs> I mean, it could have been a lot worse off the, off the cup, man. Oh, I think we did awesome. No, I thought that was great.